Exploring lakes, rivers, and reservoirs across the country with an unyielding goal to enlighten viewers from a fisheye perspective. Come along and we'll investigate the habitat. Much more than a fishing trip, this is an eye-opening aquatic experience. Welcome to Kim Stricker's Hook and Look. Several lakes across the country offer up a variety of forage species sought out by smallmouth bass. Undoubtedly an opportunistic predator, smallies have been known to pursue a meal throughout all levels of the water column. Crayfish and gobies on the bottom, shiners and perch at mid-depths. However, during the emergence of the annual mayfly hatch, it's all about the bugs. Let me tell you about a place I go, I-75 exit 310, it's where I want to be. It's more than just a home to me, summer boating through the spreads, swans and loons swimming round my head, and winter trails on my sled. More than once I have said my wheels keep turning, I keep yearning for that river. Bird and mullet, so they say, the heart of the inland waterway. Boat and trolling makes my day. Kicking back and I'm okay. And now I'm wishing I'm going fishing on that river, Indian River. When it get close to 310, you know the fun's about to begin. Hit the beach and take a swim. The green docks that jump right in that river. Beautiful day in Indian River, Michigan. Man, look at them flies everywhere. Hexagena lumbata. <laughs> not, a bad, not a bad one at all. <laughs> oh, look at right in the midst of all the flies. Look at that. Oh, yes. Very nice. Come on, my net. There you go. Not a bad fish at all. Get them out of the net. Huh. Very nice. Nice, chunky mullet lake. Smallmouth. When they get off the bed and the flies start hatching, that, that whole transition of them moving, they move around these little humps and, and areas where, where there's scattered grass, some sand grass with maybe a, you know, a little bit of cabbage here and there or milfoil. But they like eating them flies. He come up for it. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Upon our arrival the prior afternoon, there was no sign of bugs. But overnight, the annual emergence occurred, and in a big way. The phenomenon of the hex hatch rapidly alters the feeding habits of a variety of fish. The emerging adults are buoyant and float on the surface, virtually littering the water with abundant food for surface feeders. Simply present your cast to the recognizable dimples created by the rising fish and let the mayfly madness commence. I mean, look at all those flies. Is that unreal? See another one there, look at his back up there. I'm coming into him here. It's this kind of scenario that you can catch some big fish at this time of year. Come on, eat it. 
he's got him. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, eating those flies. Showing yourself. He's got one eye. He's got one eye. Look at that, huh? That's a nice fish. Yeah. <laughs> that is so much fun, huh? To, to visually see them slurping at the surface. This is one eye. Nice, healthy mullet lake. Smallmouth. Fun stuff. They just come up and just, you see their backs come up. They're just slurping. That's so cool. Neat, neat time of year. But it's a, a specialized time of year, and the, the caffeine shed's a good bait to throw. KVD splash, a little popper, another good bait. But I like that caffeine shed. There's more of that action coming right up. Stay with us. Hook and Look is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company. Number one in fishing lures. Seagar, trust Seagar when everything is on the line. Power pole, swift, silent, secure. Aquaview, reinventing underwater cameras. And by Indian River, Michigan Tourist Bureau. Pure water, pure trails, pure north. Welcome back to Indian River, Michigan. If you've just joined us, Kim is casting a four inch caffeine shad to smallmouth bass as they break the surface while feeding on mayflies. If you get it to them before they see you, they're gonna bite. So I'm just looking at the surface, keeping my eye open. If I see one feed, I get close enough to cast to it. And what I do is I cast to the spot. And those fish during the hatch are looking up. Their focus is up because of that hatch. They're looking for the flies on the surface. So they're looking up, they see that caffeine shad hit the surface and then slowly fall and twitch. And man, they, they want it. Ooh, look at that big one, look at that big one. Ho, 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 that was a big one. Come on. Eat it. Eat it. Fish. Mm, yeah. It's a big one too. It's a good one. <laughs> it's a good one. Look at that beauty. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. Love it. You just tear it up there. Just keep that hook in you, baby. Oh yes. Look at how pretty that is. Oh yes. That's better. <laughs> oh man. What a beautiful smallmouth. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Little caffeine shed. Look at that. That's what we come up to Indian River for. Nice, big football type smallmouth. Eating on those mayflies. You know it. All right. Thank you, fish. Getting excited, starting to shake a little bit. With all the smallmouth that I've caught over the years, I still shake, I still get excited. It is such a riot. And up here at Burton Mullet, I just know that the next cast could be one of them just giant hogs. As the sun rose and the clouds began to clear, I peeled off my sweatshirt and because of the calm conditions, was able to spot one of the few males still attending to his nest. It didn't take long to figure why he hadn't been pulled. He was very hesitant. However, I accepted the challenge and after several casts to the bed with my caffeine shad, look at he's got, he's got it that time. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> ooh,
Yes, sir. Nice fish. You made me work for you. Yeah. That's a nice solid chunk of fish. You made me work for you. Yeah, there's a few, few fish left on the bed. Let me get them back in there. There's a few fish left on the bed. Very few. And that, that one uh, was sitting next to a rock. But it's that post-spawn time is when this mayfly hatch usually happens. Although virtually impossible to precisely calculate the onset, my experience tells me that when the water temperature reaches the mid-60s and you have some pleasantly calm, humid nights is when the emergence is likely to peak. And when it does, load up with caffeine shads and hit the lake. And that's another thing, is it's very important that this bait falls properly, has the proper speed, and also important that it jerks and attracts the fish. I'm using this weightless with a, just a three-aught wide gap hook. That's the only weight that I'm using. So the more weight you add, so if, if you added a, a belly hook or whatever to this, it just doesn't have that action or the nice gentle fall that they're looking for at this time. Also, to get it to fall properly, it's very, very important to use fluorocarbon line. Uh, this is Tatsu 20 pound, and it sinks well. If you used monofilament, monofilament doesn't sink very well. It sinks very slowly, and if you look at them side by side, you can see. Put on your mask and fins. An informative dive segment is on deck. Okay, everyone into the pool. I'm going to travel down the weed edge and see if I see some of our critters. This is the perch I was talking about. Most skull perch around that middle soil. So about like those perch. Look at the skull, the young of the year perch. As I proceed along this productive area, it wasn't surprising at all that I encountered a variety of preferred food items for smallmouth bass throughout the entire water column. Crayfish and round gobies along the bottom, schools of yellow perch at mid-depth, and of course, the floating mayflies on the surface. But I think they're focusing on those mayflies this week. There's a smallmouth. interesting to see underwater how the smallmouth related to the patches of milfoil. They don't get down into the milfoil. They don't get in that thick stuff. 
but they actually they, they rest like on top of it, just, just within it. I'd come up to it and you'd see them all of a sudden appear and swim away. Pretty cool. Ooh, gosh, that's a big one. Gosh, that's a big one right there. They're feeding here, they're feeding. Feeding on the mayflies. Here we go. <laughs> oh man, look at this. Nope, this never gets old. Look at that, look. Oh man, he ate it, he really ate it. A little beep, it looks like. Very nice. Oh, those are chunks. <laughs> those are chunks. And look at how he ate that thing. I mean, it's way down there. I don't know. I'm probably going to have to cut the hook. As Kim cuts the hook, we'll cut for a commercial. Stay with us. This portion of Hook and Look is brought to you by Ranger Boats. Still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, introducing the all new Evan Rood E Tech G2. Sims Fishing Products, the choice of professional guides and anglers worldwide. Dr. Edward Lonieski, ethical and effective stem cell therapy. And by Sportfish Michigan, your source for the top charter captains and guides. Let me tell you about a place I go, I 75 exit 310. Welcome back to Hook and Look. The Indian River 310 song was co-written and performed by an old high school friend of Kim's, Mike Ridley. This talented musician and comedian, acknowledged for his great live performances in popular local taverns, is perhaps more well known as the Michigan Man. Today, Mike resides in Indian River, serving as the elected supervisor of Tuscarora Township, yet still pursues his passion for music and entertaining on a part-time basis. This is the uh, height of the tourist season right now, the, uh, uh, the hot days of summer, end of July, early August, and uh, we get them from all over, all over the Midwest, and uh, they come up here. We have beautiful waters, beautiful park system. We're a short trip away from Straits of Mackinac where you can see the big bridge, you go out to Mackinac Island or the Upper Peninsula. We have, we have so much in the way of assets for, for tourists and residents, you know, the hunting and fishing. We have rivers for kayaking and fly fishing. We have uh, great golf around here. This is, we're at the heart of the Inland Waterway, which starts at Crooked Lake and ends in Straits of Mackinac. So it's, it's quite an attraction for people to see. This is Veterans Pier right here. And it's a federal wall that was existing there. And uh, we got a trust fund grant for $384,000 and raised $235,000 in private money and built this beautiful 10 foot wide walkway all the way down to the end where all those kids are. It's 24 by 24 down there. But uh, I don't know, fresh water just seems to draw people and uh, we just love seeing people come to Indian River. A little ripple on the water is nice. Oh, 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 there he is, it's a good one. Oh, it's a good one. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Oh, get him on that. There you go. That's a nice thing. Nice thing uh, with an ultra float. Not only does it make your net float, but when you're one handing, you can set it there and you're not gouging your boat. There's another good solid chunk of smallmouth. Indian River. Yes, sir. Good solid. Good solid fish, that's fun. He come up, he looked at it, he stopped it, he looked at it. And... Couldn't stand that caffeine shed, could you? Alrighty. That's another one of the neat things about this presentation is the visual contact. I mean, often, you jerk this through the surface and you just see them things come up. Oh yeah! 
<laughs> That's smallmouth fishing for you. Yes. Oh, get my net. That is fun, fun, fun. Well, hello, darling. That's a stud. Good solid three pounder. Oh, gosh. Had you hooked good too, didn't I? Huh? I just love Indian River. Indian River, baby! Hey, if you like family fun, scenic attractions, and catching big old smallies, you need to treat yourself and come fish the lakes around Indian River, Michigan. Not only does this region grow giants, this is without a doubt a fisherman-friendly community offering a variety of accommodations to suit your needs. Conventional hotels with pool and plenty of parking, clean mom and pop owned motels who personally go out of their way to cater to their guests, comfortable cabins, some even riverside with boat docking and boat rental. You can find a map and an entire accommodations listing on the Indian River Tourist Bureau website. So check it out and check in, and we'll see you next week on Hook and Look. Hook and Look is a Kim Stricker production.